let's just take a moment. Let's invite Holy Spirit in. He's here. He's with us. We just have to recognize him. So we just throw off and brush off the cares of this world in Jesus' name. And let's just choose to be good ground today. We choose not to allow limitations to come in the way, whether it be, you know, our throats or our bodies or our mindsets. Um, we choose to just throw off anything that would get in our way of receiving what God has for us today. Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would speak. This is your time and this is your service. And and we, we bless you and we want to hear what you say. We want to do what you are doing. Um, God, we want to echo everything you are doing on in heaven on earth right now. So Lord, I just ask you to open our ears to hear um, spiritually and hear naturally and that you would open our, all of our senses to encounter and experience you and encounter and experience each other in relationship. And Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so we're going to get going on the message right away. We're going to do a little music later. Chris is hopping on. Let's make sure to tell him about the Crowning Jewels event, if somebody wouldn't mind doing that later. Um, so it was easy a little bit to figure out what to bring to you guys today. I feel like well, I was just talking to you about how God's really confirmed the prophetic word in me. And um, a lot of it is I'll be giving you guys a prophetic word. And I found when I was in writing how, how it echoed with every church I went to. So I went to three different churches during that time being gone. So, um, so I went to my girl Athena's church out in Antioch, California. I went to Bethel, of course, and I went to Ivan Roman's church up in talent Oregon Oregon I'll never say that right S Oregon yes okay no it's not Oregon anyways um so it it's very interesting how what I've been hearing from God has just been echoed throughout this the whole body of Christ as a whole I you know Athena's church is that is led by an evangelist um and it and obviously Ivan's church is led by a prophet and obviously Bethel is led by an apostle and you've got these equipping gifts and they're all echoing one another. And really the word right now, the season is the table. If you will remember uh, my sermon, say maybe a month, two months ago and go back to, there's two sermons that are essential for this time and the season. And I, I did them um, back to back. So there's a sermon is called Jesus at the table. I think it's called something about table on there. Um, and then there's another sermon about love. And these are two crucial sermons for this time and this hour. And so I want to invite you to go back and to listen to them. Um, they're so important, but listen, the prophetic ministry should bring clarity. And a lot of us are looking for clarity right now. And so you need a word from God. <laughs> we need a word from God and we need more time with the father. I, I remember like I met with my mentor, EJ. She's my social counselor. Amazing, really great woman of God. That's just as sharp tongued as I am. And she looked at me because I'm like, I still don't have an answer on A, B, C, and D. She goes, well, you need more time with the father. And I'm like, well, yes, I do. <laughs> Fine, right? Jokes for like the last little bit here anyways all right so besides that okay listen we need more time with the father we need a prophetic word we need to be ministering to one another the word of the season right now is inviting jesus to the table it um another word for it uh the one i heard at bethel was it's a communion revival um it's all about relationship right now it's all about family um, Ivan's word echoed it as well is in is it is about coming around the table as a family Jesus has a seat at the table and we are to begin to really connect relationally once again it is so important we are in here's the thing we are in a new season 
but there are a there is a section of people that do not realize it yet and that is the problem that i'm seeing us in is okay so the past four years and i mean for everybody i was listening to story after story after story of everybody across the planet has been in a winter season for the last four years and what that means is god show me winter and it, it's been said in different words here and there but what winter looks like is all the leaves fall off the trees and you can see everything that's on the floor of the forest. Everything becomes clear and everything becomes visible. And I'm also been referring to it as a great revealing. Things have been exposed and revealed in this last season, like over and over and over again. You see a lot of people, they're just like, the sky is falling, you know, they're the, the world is ending. Um, the world is getting darker and it's not even true. It's not even true. The world is not getting darker. The world is getting brighter. More people are getting saved today than they were in biblical days. This The truth of the reality is that there were their darkness that are simply being exposed so it could be seen. You know, there were relationships four years ago that I thought were close to my heart <laughs> that were real tight relationships. And God had to expose what was on the floor of the forest that I couldn't see when all the foliage was around. There were there has been relationship shifts, a relationship change. Most people would say things like, uh, this has been the hardest years of my life. Over and over again, you will hear, me too, me too. Me too. And now I've been seeing in the past several months that we've been on a threshold. The threshold is this doorway where now you're seeing like, for me, the way God always prophetically shows me a season is I can't see a way forward until I can. And I just remain in the path that I'm going until God opens that, that pathway to me. I always call it like when I was a little girl, um, under third grade and lower, uh, I had a big cornfield out back of my house and you know, I was short. <laughs> I'm short now. I was really short then. And I would go run out in the cornfield and I would get utterly lost. And I would just stay at the, the place where I'm going until I could see that the corn was tamped down. When I could see the corn was tamped down, I knew that this was the way to go. And God has been using that spiritually from that day forward is that I know when I cannot see the path, I cannot see the trail, I cannot see the way forward. I just wait until I see it tamped down. Now, for the last few months, God is showing me a tamped down trail. There's been grass tamped down. The weeds have been tamped down. It's, it's this opening beginning to come for this new season. And now, <laughs> and now we are there. It's like literally right now we are there. I can't even tell you how many prophetic voices are saying new season, new season, new season. It's, we're in a new season. We're in a new season. God showed me through walking through it prophetically. Um, he did this last year to me too. This year, he used the hikes to walk me through a prophetic journey. It's the same thing as he did with Moses. Moses had to walk around a mountain for 40 years. <laughs> and he's out in the wilderness and he had to learn a lot of lessons. Well, God was teaching me something as I climbed uh, this mountain hike. Long story short, I, I climbed a mountain to 10,000 foot elevation. I think we climbed 3,009 of it ourselves. And I had a fever the entire time, but I was not going to miss the day gone hike. Not going to do it. And I tell you what, it was the hardest hike of my entire life. Um, I think that I could do that hike again if it was on a different type of trail. It was unstable. It was rocky. It was really hard to walk on because like my ankle would turn and there was no stability. And I really didn't want to fall down several thousand feet, right? <laughs> you fall down on a mountain, you fall way down, right? And so I, I was going slower and slower, even though I was sick, God was like giving me oomph to get up to that elevation and continue climbing. And, and I, I drove in with my grit and I'm like, I'm doing this. I'm not giving up. I'm going to get to the peak. And God showed me after this, he had to have me walk through. I kid you not the, this was called the desolation wilderness. 
That is the name of the area. I've got a picture of myself by the sign that says desolation wilderness. And so we walked for miles up through the desolation. And that represents that former season, I'm telling you. And when we started to get to the top, we could see a shortcut. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. We're like, should we take the shortcut or the long way? Well, duh, let's go the shortcut, right? And so then it just got to be where you could see the peak was like right there ahead of you. And it looked like it was seconds away, even though it was like a mile away. It was like right there. And I'm like, we're not going to give up. So here we walk this entire time through the desolation, through the wilderness, through through the hardest climb of my life, through instability, through through rocky territory, we kept climbing up and then we got to the mountaintop where the view became clear and the breakthrough became apparent and the life changes became, well, you all saw, became very clear, okay? <clears throat> and that is a moment where God showed me now the season is new. That was the threshold to the new season. Yes, we had to continue to walk through the desolation wilderness out into the new season where God actually gave us an angel guide to help us complete the hike. I'm not joking. <laughs> we, both me and Andrew, <laughs> earlier in the hike, there was this couple that they had walked past us and they said, let us know if you need anything. And Dan's like, they seem like angels. And I said, well, what if they are? <laughs> And I'm telling you, on the way back down, both me and Andrew privately cried out to God, would you send us an angel to help us get done? Because we were three hours out past dark and, and it was really hard and I was really sick and I couldn't even talk anymore. And it was just enough was enough, right? And I kid you not, we had this local guy that had hiked that trail a million times um, that kept coming back for us, offering us his equipment, offering the light right from his head. Um, and then eventually said, would you like me to walk with you all the way to the end? And he did. So God sent us an angel by request to guide us through the end of that season and into the new journey. That was really interesting because the next, next hike we did was about 50 times easier, hardly broke a sweat. And it was, and it was still a mountain peak. And we still climbed a little bit of elevation, but it was an easier journey, an easier hike, and it was right around Heart Lake. So God is bringing us out of a season of the desolation wilderness into a beautiful, lighthearted journey of adventure around the heart. This whole next season, I'm telling you, it's about the heart. It's about relationship. It's about journeying together. It's about putting our roots down and allowing our roots to come together to strengthen us like the redwoods are. It's a it, it's about allowing Jesus to come to our family table and serve and minister to us just like he's somebody sitting there. He's so real. He's so tangible. But we have a step we have to do first. <clears throat> Let me get a drink. I apologize. So the most impactful message for me while we were gone came from Chris Valentin. Most of them, they're ministered through tears. You know, they've been through a lot lately. Benny battled cancer, cancer and passed on. Sherry is battling cancer right now um, and making it through. That girl's tough as nails. There's so much transition and change and there's just a lot going on. And, you know, Bill, it's like, he just, his heart is like on his sleeve and so is Chris. And Chris brought me right to the floor. I mean, like the word that he was sitting, sitting with, I wouldn't allow myself to cry because my throat hurts so bad, <laughs> just being real. But he pointed out a missing gap that I think the most of us need to attend to so that we can walk into the season that is lighter, that's got better views, that's full of adventure, that's, that, that is hiking around the heart, okay? Heart Lake is a lake literally shaped like a heart. It is, and, and, and the water is Holy Spirit, and he is filling our hearts once again, and they are going to be fresh, and they are going to be new, and they are going to be revived, but first we have to close out the old season. 
And the way to close out the old season is this way. I had an aha moment when Chris said that he had an encounter with God and he, and God said, give me your ashes. Listen, God cannot make beauty from your ashes until you give him your ashes. There are a bunch of us, and definitely I have been one of them, that have been repressing the pain of the old season, that have been hosting the heaviness of the old season, that have been living in the tension of the old season. And until we give him our ashes, he can't make beauty from them. And I'm telling you, this next season is about beauty. It's about Holy Spirit filling us again, us walking around Heart Lake. We have to find our security in him and not our future. God is about to use your worst season to get you into his promises. It's a suddenly, and it's a decision. Sometimes we ha it all has to go wrong so it can go oh so right. My life has gone oh so wrong. And it, I tell you what, so many things have gone right now and has been made right. And the beauty is beginning to happen. There are layers of pain that have become the ashes in our heart that has weighed us down. And sometimes we just have to admit to God, God, that hurts. God, it hurts that like, like Steve, it hurts that I don't have my home built yet. God, it hurts that I don't have what I expected. It hurts this season that has hurt me. It hurts that people have said terrible things and have destroyed reputations. It hurts what has happened in this former season walking through the desolation wilderness. It hurts because it felt like your present what presence wasn't there. It hurts. It hurts that I have lost some relationships. It hurts some watching some of you go through the pain of loss of relationship. It hurts to watch how things have gone oh so wrong so they can go oh so right once again. So I want to encourage us. I'm going to send Dan out to play for us for a little bit, but I want you to use your pen and paper right now. I did this yesterday. I had Dan bring me up to Governor Dodge State Park, even though it was cold and it was snowing. We didn't care. <clears throat> because it was time to drop my ashes in the higher place. And so I went up on Pine Cliff and I just started crying out to God. He, he, he triggered it. Cause I was like, I'm not doing this. You know, I just, uh, he, yeah. And so he's like, God has said to drop your ashes. It's time to give up him your ashes. And I'm like, God, it hurts when blank. It hurts when this happened. It hurts. You know, for me, it's like, it hurts that our church isn't bigger than it is. It hurts me that when I preach a prophetic word, a lot of times it falls to the ground and people are waiting for a bigger shot voice to hear it. God, it hurts that it seems like my prayers aren't being answered, that you're not sending the provision I need. It hurts that the, my finances are in chaos right now. And I just started crying out to God in the reality and rawness of my heart. It hurts, God, these things that people have said. You know, uh, one of the things that I cried out to him is, God, it hurts when people treat me like I do not have humanity that I'm just there to use and to pull from and to draw from, it hurts. And that didn't come from you guys. I'm saying these are things that has really been happening. It was so ugly cry that people literally crossed the lake. <laughs> there was a family across the lake that was like, oh, they're like, are you guys okay up there? <laughs> because the whole lake heard and I'm telling you, that represents Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the waters. Yeah. And he was echoing the beauty of my pain, the beauty of my ashes. As I was giving them to him, I saw a vision. It was like a big, like iron pot of gold, a liquid gold just being poured out 
and made into something beautiful in that moment. And he was saying, your ashes are beautiful to me. And I want to encourage us to take a moment. We need, it's time to close out this old season once and for all. If you want to stay in that old wilderness season, I call you a little bit crazy, but have fun with that because I'm going on a journey. I'm ready to move ahead. It is time to walk into the new season. And I'm telling you, it's beautiful. It is Holy Spirit filling us once again, reviving our hearts, giving us fresh water, fresh anointing, walking it's around the heart. I'm telling you, this whole season is about the heart and he wants to usher us into this new season, but we can't go into this new season till we let go of the old. So what pain do you have to let go of right now? I challenge you. And so Pastor Dan, if you want to go play us just five minutes, I want to do some self-reflection time. Get into a place where you're a daughter, a son, and where you're looking at Papa God. And I want you to ask him, Papa, what are the ashes I need to give you? What are the things that I am holding on to? Let him reveal what is going on. Let him reveal the pain and release it to him. And then we'll, we'll come back um, together. And let's walk into the new season um, together. So I'm going to go ahead. We can turn off our cameras if we need to. I want you to be authentic and reflective with God as Dan plays this music. And then when we come back, turn your camera back on.